<clears throat> Hello, anybody out there? I've just been trying to get my uh, phone organized on my tripod. Hopefully it'll hold together in time. I'm just going to check that I'm coming on live in the group. Who knows where I can end up sometimes. I've just not long finished dinner so I hope um, you have too and you can join me here in the group. Just checking now. And yes, I'm there. Hi, everybody. How are we all tonight? Say hi if you're here. If you're watching on the replay, let me know with hashtag replay if you're going to be watching on the replay. Um, it's nice of you to join me here tonight. Just fix this phone up a little bit. There we are. Um, for those that you who don't know me, my name's Anne Murphy and I'm from domesplicity.com and I wrote this program, Shop Save, Eat Well. Uh, I didn't write it, it was just the way my, my mother grocery shopped and my grandparents grocery shopped and probably generations before me and it was just something that I adapted it from a young age and have always grocery shopped like this so I don't know of any other way and it's what has allowed me to stick to a really low budget that fits in with our finances um, we could choose any amount but this is just our sweet spot of $150 per fortnight and we can manage quite well on it so um, I decided to write about it on my website domesplicity.com and it's become a successful program to help people um, save money on their groceries. So I'm here to tonight to tell you all about it, how it works, um, what I do to make it work for me and how you can make it work for yourself. So if you stay to the end I've got a really special offer um, to announce um, but let's get started and if you've got any questions just let me know, just type them in the um, comment bar. If I don't see them straight away, I'll get back to them after the broadcast. So um, thanks again for joining me. So um, how does Shop Smart Eat Well work? Well, to tell you the truth, I really don't know of any other way to grocery shop. Like I'm kind of assuming that people write a menu plan and they'll look at what ingredients go into those meals whether that's bread for school lunches, cereal for breakfast, um, sausages for dinner, chicken for dinner, whatever. Look at what they've got in the fridge and pantry and freezer to see if they've got enough of those ingredients to make those meals and then they go uh, shopping for what they need and other things like shampoo, cling wrap, dishwashing detergent, laundry products, whatever else they need to do their grocery shopping and that might work fine for some people. Um, I don't menu plan. I I think I've probably tried it once many, many years ago, but I don't menu plan. I don't stockpile. I don't stockpile for the main reason that I've got probably five, or probably 10 supermarkets within a 10 kilometer radius from me. So there's no chance of me ever having to run out of groceries <coughs> without having an option um, close by to me. And also I just don't have the room. I don't have the room to buy uh, products in large quantities. What I buy is enough for my family. So there's no need for me to buy a five kilo bag of rice or um, you know, 10 kilo bags of flour just to save a few dollars. I can manage on the um, ingredients that I buy. 
So the secret to the Shop Smart Eat Well program, and it's one, it's an analogy that I've used which helps explain how it works. The secret is you have to run your kitchen like a restaurant. So if you could imagine a restaurant, any kind of restaurant, cafe, fish and chip shop, school tuck shop, we even did this in the school tuck shop when I worked um, in the can school canteen. You have a menu, an Indian restaurant, a Chinese restaurant, a French restaurant, a fish and chip shop. They have a menu and they have to make sure that they have all of the ingredients to make those meals on their menu. And that's, that's your shopping list. That's why I said yesterday in a Facebook Live, I said start thinking about the meals and the the food that your family likes to eat. That becomes your grocery list. You write your menu, you create the ingredients list to, to make all of those meals, your favorite meals. You know, it could be 10, 15, 20 meals per month that you put on rotation. Um, this includes all your Glad wraps, your um, Ziploc bags, your detergents, toilet paper, all of your groceries. Because you think about a a restaurant, they need dishwashing liquid, they need cleaning supplies, they need takeaway containers, paper bags, writing, you know, menu, uh, menu pads, uh, order pads, everything. So it's exactly the same as running your, you run your kitchen like a restaurant does. So you write down all of your meals, breakfast, you know, anything that you could possibly have in a month or a fortnight or a week. And include everything. So if you have, if your children like cornflakes, milk, and uh, a sprinkle of sugar, write all that down in your ingredients list. Write down uh, what you might have for morning tea if you make muffins or fruit. If you've got three children and they each take a piece of fruit to school in a week, write down 15 pieces of fruit, uh, or buy tin fruit or frozen fruit. Write it all down, and then once you've got that, but those basic pantry, freezer and fridge lists, when you when you use up an item or when you run out of an item, that's all you buy at the grocery store. So that's all I'm ever doing when I grocery shop is I'm just topping up those, those basic ingredients that I buy, uh, that I need to make those meals that my family like. That's why it will work for anyone. Now, I'm not saying $150 per fortnight might work for you if you've got a large family or you've got special dietary needs. But whatever your budget is, that's and then you just stick to it. So if your budget's $150 and you're going around and, you know, you, you see, you know, you're ticking off everything that you go to need to keep your pantry level stocked up and you see um, five tins of tomatoes for $3 and you don't need five tomatoes, you tins of tomatoes you don't buy it or if you see something gone special and it's not in the budget a markdown or whatever don't buy it unless you know like it's if it's meat you know like I did the other week I bought um, some markdown meat and it caused me to go three dollars over my budget well you know you've got to sort of weigh it up but that's how that's how it works it's as simple as that now you might be thinking well I don't want to be eating spaghetti bolognese every week I don't want to be eating curried sausages. I don't want to be eating those same things. When you've got a fully stocked pantry of all the basic ingredients, you could make a million different things. I made those beef mince porcupines today. Now, but, but sorry, basically all of the ingredients that I used to make that, well, what would be in spaghetti bolognese minus the rice? So, you know, Google's your best friend. Don't worry about all these apps, these recipe apps and things like that. Honestly, you can find the most amazing recipes just by Google searching. So if you were to say buy um, your one of your family meals was curried chicken that you enjoyed a lot and you go, oh, not curried chicken again this, this month, you know, I'm really sick of it. So you'd bought chicken and you say it's a Thai curry chicken, you've bought coconut milk, chicken, um, some Asian type vegetables. All you've got to do is type into Google uh, chicken, coconut milk, 
and another ingredient that, <clears throat> pardon me, another ingredient that needs using up. And it will bring up millions and millions of recipes. I can just think straight off the top of my head, if you've got peanut butter, you can make chicken satay with the coconut milk. You can make the chicken um, into skewers and um, have kebabs or save the coconut milk for another recipe. Um, any kind of milk has a variation. So spaghetti bolognese even, you know, you can make all the different variations of spaghetti. You can make lasagna. You can include a layer of spinach and ricotta to extend the mince. You can extend the beef mince with lentils. You can, you know, have meat-free meals. You, you know, just keep everything stocked up in your pantry uh, based on those ingredients, based on those meals that you that your family like and that they eat and then create variations of them. So I have a general rule of um, everything goes in the freezer. So just about all of my cheeses, all of my breads. Um, I tried, tried to buy a lot of frozen uh, vegetables because the fresh are expensive, so they're a bit cheaper. But if I buy fresh vegetables or fresh fruit, they get um, used up first. And if I know I can't use them up, I'll prepare them in whatever way I need to and then freeze them. For example, apples that are going a bit bad, I'll just peel and stew up or um, just soften up to cook the apples. And then I've got a little container or bag of um, cooked apples in the freezer that I can just add to some apple and cinnamon muffins for the next, um, next week's school uh, lunch boxes and then freeze those muffins after I've made them, make an apple tea cake. Um, you can use apple puree to sweeten cakes, normal cakes. The list just goes on and on and on. And what I want you to know is that anything that you want to know about how to use up ingredients, you know, what to do to save it, you know, a bit of yogurt left over in the, in the fridge, anything like that, just ask in the group because I kind of, I'm a little bit weird like that. I, I really love doing that. If someone says, oh, I've got a bit of pumpkin left over that I need to use up, how can I use it? And I kind of, I kind of love doing that. So anytime you've got any questions at all about how to use something up, how you think you might be able to cook it, um, how you might be able to not waste it, you know, just ask in the group and I'll be only um, too help, happy to help. So um, variety, what else can we talk about? Um, the, the other grocery items like laundry powder, that's another big expense. I only buy the $3.99 box of home brand Coles laundry detergent. It's a four kilo box and it lasts me about three months. I have a um, quarter cup, quarter measuring cup. So it might say to use half a cup or a cup per load. I've got an eight and a half kilo washing machine and I use a quarter cup for every load and the washing comes out spotless. So all of those um, soap powder companies, laundry powder companies are uh, telling you porky pies about how to, um, you know, get your washing clean. You don't need anywhere near as much washing powder. You can buy all the uh, raw ingredients to make up your own laundry powders, your own uh, cleaning supplies. I, it's been years since I've been down the cleaning aisle in a supermarket to buy something. First of all, the smell just gets to me, but I just don't buy it. I don't have air freshener. I don't have, um, like I use natural oils to burn in the house. Sometimes I you buy the home brand laundry detergent. And I've also got a three or four uh, pack box of sunlight soap, something that my grandmother used to have all the time. When Whenever you get um, low on any kind of soap, laundry soap, bathing soap, dishwashing liquid, you know, sunlight soap graded, um, can make so many different things, hand hand washes, I think so it's always there for as a backup for me. Um, what else? Um, I also try to, the ingredients that I buy, I also try to buy in their uh, most pure form. So when, like I'll talk about mayonnaise, for example, I always have whole egg mayonnaise in the um, fridge. Now I could go back even one step and just make my own mayonnaise um, if I want to, because I always have butter, I always have oil, I always have 
um, eggs, nearly always have eggs. So I could make mayonnaise from scratch if I wanted to. So buying a, a jar of home brand Coles mayonnaise, I guess is my shortcut. But from that, I can make Caesar dressing. I can make coleslaw dressing. I can make tartare sauce. I can make um, any kind of creamy salad dressing instead of having to buy the other three or four type dressings. Another ingredient I like to have is oats, just your plain rolled oats. From that I can make granola, I can make muesli slices, I can make, um, I can use it as a filler in um, rissoles, meat patties, uh, anything that needs a bit of thickening like sausage rolls. If you're making a sausage roll mix and it's a little bit wet, add a few, um, add half a cup or quarter cup of rolled oats to um, to bind it all and, and keep it together. Oats in baking, you know, it, we all make um, Anzac Bickies at some point or, in a, or another. Greek yogurt is another one that I always have because I know I can use that for sweet or savoury. The last little bits of Greek yogurt in the tub always go into a cake or muffins to make it a little bit um, a nicer uh, consistency of cake or muffin. It's good as a savoury option because you can make all different types of dressings, like a better, a healthier, well, I kind of think mayonnaise isn't too bad, but Greek yogurt is good as a dressing. Uh, it's good on my cereal in the morning. It's good for kids. You can add a little bit of, um, oh, what's it called? Sugar-free uh, maple syrup is an ingredient that I always buy. It adds sweetness to Greek yogurt for the kids with some fruit mixed into it instead of buying those pre-packaged um, yogurts which are so expensive for school lunches. Um, all your herbs and spices, like I don't have a huge container of herbs and spices but I have all the basics that will allow me to make up the taco spice, the Italian spice mix, the um, Asian spice mix, all those spice mixes that you see at the supermarket um, all the packet mixes. I don't buy packet mixes or, or jars of, of different things. I can always combine whatever I've got to make whatever I need, like a, a taco taco um, spice mix uh, or whatever, whatever else. Um, stock powder. I always have a chicken, beef and vegetable stock powder because they add flavour to our meals quite cheaply and uh, it's a good way to make stock when you need stock for different things and add to different spice mixes, coatings for chicken, that kind of thing. Uh, I've mentioned frozen fruit and vegetables. Um, tinned fruit and vegetables are also just as good as fresh if you're trying to save money. And I, I missed this at the start, but I wanted to tell you all, there is no shame whatsoever in you buying takeaway or however much you want to spend on your supermarket on your grocery shopping i am not here to judge i love a takeaway meal as well we love um, probably fish and chips or a roast ch chicken from the supermarket um, the occasional takeaway there is no shame whatsoever this group isn't here to judge people to say you know if you're getting hello fresh take delivery food up you know i'm I don't care if that's if that's what you need. You do what works for yourself and for your family. But all this group is here for is to help you save money on groceries. So if you are spending way too much, this is the way to do it. And this is the way that I've done it for years. And why I say I don't meal plan either is because it's just an extra thing. It's just an extra thing that I don't have to do. I don't have to sit there and think, oh, well, you know, Monday we've got soccer practice so i better make it an easy meal tuesday i better be um tacos because it's taco tuesday and then tuesday comes and it's sort of like oh my god you know johnny's sick and i've got you know what what am i going to do i was supposed to have tacos but i can't make them now blah 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 i always plan what we're going to have either the night before by taking the meat out and all that morning or that lunchtime if, it, if I don't need to take the meat out. If I haven't taken the meat out to defrost, I'll think of something else. Eggs don't need to be defrosted. I'll make a quiche and some, some oven wedges um, with my potatoes. 
I know a lot of people work and if menu planning works for you that's fine too but I can I know in my head that I've got all the ingredients in my house to make what my family likes like um, my daughter's been spending a lot of time at her dad's now um, instead of living with us and she was the most pickiest eater that you would you have ever ever met so I guess I could go to the trouble of thinking, well, you know, the night before, what's for dinner? Is it is she going to find some fault in it? Is she going to pick everything out of it? Is she going to have a tantrum about what I've put in front of it? No, she couldn't possibly because I know she had this two weeks ago. Well, you could bet your bottom dollar she would find something wrong with it. So that was just my, um, the last 13 years of my life preparing food for her, but um, my son's pretty good. My husband's pretty good. They'll just eat about eat whatever I serve and um, put in front of them. But it's funny that if I do go to a bit of trouble, they go, mm, that was good. If I make something that's really quick and easy and just a kind of little bit slopped together, they go, mm, that was the best. Thanks very much, mum. So, you know, it's another thing. You don't have to feel like you, ha you have to create a three course restaurant quality meal every night either. Uh, Time's a big issue uh, when you're cooking. Just throw it all on an oven tray. Throw all your sausages and vegetables on an oven tray. Um, they call these tray bakes. Do some Google research on tray bakes. I've actually got a post um, on my website about tray bakes. And you can just throw it all throw it all in a pot, throw it all in the slow cooker, whatever's going to make, make your life easier. Get a big platter of salad ingredients and just throw it all on a big platter and throw the grilled chicken or fish, whatever it is, on the platter and everyone help themselves with some bread. Um, start looking at other uh, cuisines for inspiration. I've got quite a few posts on my website about um, how to create Greek food easily at home or Mexican food or Lebanese food. You know, some of these um, countries they have these tiny little cupboards in these tiny one-person kitchens. Well, they even cook outside. You know, look at some Indian families. And they create the most beautiful food. And it's all just spread out for everyone to help themselves. So don't think that, you know, you need this elaborate big kitchen to create this beautiful big three-course fine dining meal every night. Food should be enjoyed for its simplicity and its taste. It's another thing, just buy seasonal. The um, I have no idea really when I go to the supermarket every fortnight what fruit and vegetables I'm going to buy. I know in my mind that I've got um, I've got to buy some vegetables. If I buy cauliflower, I know I'll um, if it's cheap because it's in season. I'll incorporate cauliflower into my meals. I can make cauliflower rice. I can use cauliflower for any any meal. I can use cauliflower in curries, in Thai dishes, in Indian dishes, whatever. So cauliflower is a pretty versatile ingredient. So I just always go to the supermarket and buy what's the cheapest and what's in season. So mangoes are just coming down in price. All the stone fruit will be here soon and the cherries and um, everything. So that's another thing. Um, and like I said before, keep everything in the... I just need to have a little bit of a drink, sorry. I always do this when I go... Um, I love to talk, so I get um, a bit um, dry in the throat when I talk too much. Uh, keep everything in the fridge and the freezer. So um, all my bread's in the freezer. My husband's a bit funny about it being in the freezer and he always has to have it defrosted. But... I just keep it all in the freezer and I, I even make up the kids' sandwiches frozen. By the time they get to school, um, they're always defrosted. They're always defrosted within, the bread's always defrosted within five minutes, except maybe in winter it might be seven minutes, but it's always really fresh. All those Lebanese breads and Turkish breads that I buy marked down, they're always kept in the freezer. Uh, the wraps, you know, I buy the... Uh, tortillas from the home brand tortillas and I think there's 10 in a pack and we normally eat eight 
um, eight or nine. So there's always one left over, and I'll pop that one left over in the in the fridge, and I have uh, in the freezer if I have an accumulation of them, or well, then I'll um, either save them or make myself a wrap for lunch the next day. So that's basically it. And if you have any questions at all about how um, you can set the Shop Smart Eat Well program up for yourself. You know, everyone that's um, bought the program from me has had tremendous success instantly. Um, one lady who's um, taken herself off Facebook, a uh, friend of mine, she bought the Shop Smart Eat Well program and she has a um, husband, 11 year old boy and a six year old boy from memory. And she went from $200 a week down to $92 um, in her first week and has remained consistent in, in that level of spending all the time. It's not like we can't afford it. Like I, some people can't and, you know, some, like I could easily spend $200 a week on groceries if I wanted to, but I don't need to. I'd rather that money for something else. Like I'd rather it to go out for, for dinner one night to a nice restaurant um, or not that we do, we're, we're pretty much homebodies, but a night out at the movies or put towards a weekend away up up at the Sunshine Coast or whatever. I think why hand over your hard-earned money to the supermarket when it's not necessary? You know, um, there's just so many different ways to save on all, you know, all these little things that you can do to save money on the ingredients that you buy and what you cook, how you cook them, save you time. And the group's here for you to ask any questions you have at any time um, that you like. I'm always hanging around. I work from home and um, even if it's four o'clock in the afternoon and you've got a question about how to cook something, you know, just don't hesitate to ask. It's kind of like I've got, you know, decades of history of how to, how to cook things and what to make on the spur of the moment. It's just like I can't pour it all out, you know, to give it all away to you. Maybe one day I'll write a book, but um, just never hesitate to ask me questions. I'm, I'm only too happy um, to help. So just to finish up, I'll let you go um, and get on with your evening and your families. And I see one of our members, um, one of our longstanding members is watching and she's a birthday girl today. Hi, Barb, happy birthday. Hope you had a great day. Um, I want to thank you all for being in the group. But if, if you're really, interested in how to set this uh, shop smart eat well program up which includes all of those um, forms that I mentioned about how to create your own menu like a menu form an ingredients list and then your pantry fridge and freezer lists and step-by-step -step instructions on how to make the shop smart eat well program work for you on any budget using any supermarket for any dietary requirements um, I'm going to include the link for you to buy the Shop Smart Eat Well program. It's normally only $19, but until midnight, 31st of October, I'm making it $9. So I'm taking $10 off, especially for my members. Um, don't tell anyone. It's just for us, just for you guys. So um, I'll drop the link to that and the code, and the code is 10 off one zero o double o double f so i'll drop the link to that when we finish the um, broadcast you can download it take your time take your time to set up all of the think about all those meals that your family likes um, and it will work i promise you if it's not working for you let me know but um i haven't had one person yet who hasn't had success with it I'd really like to thank you for your time tonight. Please don't hesitate to ask me questions. I'm here. And happy cooking, happy saving, happy shopping. And I'll catch you all again sometime soon. Bye.